Hi, all. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, June 8th, 2023, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. Intro to Matterport plus Inspect to record inspections, communicate actions, and document compliance. And here are subject matter experts, Brandon Foreman, founder of Inspect, and Stuart Gilly, vice president of marketing of Inspect. Stuart, Brandon, good to see you today. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Dan, for having us. Absolutely, Dan. Good to see you again. Awesome. Uh, Stuart, we're going to do some role plays in a few moments. Uh, facilities manager, uh, real estate agent, uh, in a compliance person, the facilities manager. But before we kind of jump into those role plays, how about giving us the, the big picture about NSPEC? Yeah, so Inspect was really created as uh, as us being Matterport users, and what we were finding was we had these these great digital twins that um, really gave us a lot of visibility into a project. And where we where we kind of found things falling apart was here we are in a boardroom with a bunch of people, and now we have data like we've never had before. We have uh, action like, hey, we need to go get this thing done, or this has to be fixed, or this is an opportunity. And yet here we are all jumping in our emails and taking screenshots of the screen and trying to text and send all this, uh, all these different ways of communi to, to communicate what needs to be done. And it hit us. It's like, okay, well, wait a second. This isn't actionable. How do we take this, this really awesome technology and how do we get it into the hands of the people who aren't in the boardroom where they can actually go out in in um, in in asynchronous way, be able to go out and, and achieve the goals of of what the action items are, and so Inspect was born, and we really set out to try to figure out how to make Matterport models actionable, and uh, and and we're excited about Inspect because that's what it's doing, and we're watching it solve problems for. For our clients, we're watching it save them time and money and being able to take an awesome tool like Matterport and be able to help them deliver better business results. And so, you know, in the simplest form, that's what we do. We, we're taking this digital technology and putting it out into the hands of the people in the field who can make the difference. And the, the sweet spots for Inspect, uh, perhaps in terms of verticals? Yeah, so uh, we'll talk about some of these today, but, you know, hospitality, facility management, uh, inspections, obviously, uh, facility management. We're going to talk a little about real estate, home inspectors. Um, we're, we're just seeing that, you know, AEC, we're seeing it in all these different verticals where you have things that are happening out in the field and there's real-time decisions that need to be made at the boardroom level or at, a, at an upper management level. And they need to be pushed back down in the field so that people have instructions and workers that are accurate and are time. We're trying to save uh, all these different verticals on travel time. We're trying to help make decisions quicker and faster. And we find through the asynchronous communication of it, um, we're just seeing uh, better business results happening from those. Uh, you, you mentioned three benefits, uh, uh, faster, easier, uh, saving, I think, saving time, saving money, saving travel. Uh, are there other benefits when you take Matterport and add Inspect? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I think one of the other things is that you're also creating um, you're, you're also creating vision into a uh, into a property or a project that traditionally has just taken longer to show up. You're also eliminating the need of um, a bunch of 2D digital pictures that are um, that are sent through via email. And, and uh, you know, obviously now we're getting into what is 3D digital technology and how does it make, you know, businesses run better. But, you know, I think with Inspect partnering with Matterport, it's really, it's a, it's a holistic tool in which um, somebody can walk through a building or a property quickly and start tagging those actionable items that need to happen and know that they can quickly deliver that um, out to multiple parties and being able to um, and be able to not slow down the process of of what needs to happen. And we'll and obviously we'll jump into that in a little a little bit later and show you exactly how that happens and you can see how quick those those reports can be um, sent out. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Brandon, can you uh, speak to those reports? Yeah, it's, um, you know, somewhere along the way, as Stuart said, we were customers first and we ended up becoming what we like to call ourselves, you know, kind of the reporting engine for Matterport. And um, we like to think we sought out to do that originally when all we were trying to do was to make, you know, models actionable for people to be able to take, you know, a 30,000 square foot facility and go mark up, you know, here's 60 things that need to be done. You know, let's say maybe it's paint on the wall or, you know, there's a cracked tile or you know, anything. It's something, you know, you need somebody to do it. The guy who needs to do the work doesn't need that 3D model. You know, he just needs to know where do I need to go do the work. And so when you can walk through this, you know, property, when you can inspect it and then you can text a link to someone on the team and say, here it is. And they immediately get, you know, when was the model taken? You know, where was it actually at? Let me see where it is inside the space. Point exactly to where the problem is. Tell me what needs to be done. Give me the status. Give me the urgency. And if we push that, you know, whether it be to a secure link or if we push it into a PDF or if we push it into a work order management system with APIs, it gets it right into the hands of the guy who actually swings the hammer, you know, for lack of better words, and lets him get to work right away. And then when he's done, he can snap a picture, upload it back in, and the guys back in the boardroom or the conference room, you know, they know it's been done. So it gets it actionable, it gets it fast, and somehow along the way, we ended up being that reporting engine. So uh, you, you mentioned reports, and you mentioned PDF, and I, I think I heard photos, so essentially taking photos within a Matterport tour. Uh, at a tactical level, what are the things that you're providing that person in the field with uh, within that report, within that PDF. Uh, again, you mentioned photos. Are there other things that you're annotating the space to communicate action items? Absolutely. So we allow you, we give you the ability to annotate on top of a 3D model. And what we're doing when you get down, there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of IP that sits behind it. But at the end of the day, we're taking something very complicated, you know, a 3D digital twin and bringing it back in reverse. You know, it's almost, you know, like as being a, a software company and, you know, kind of, we'd like to think in the high tech space, we actually kind of take a step backwards. You know, a lot of people are not wanting paper, they're wanting, you know, software, they're wanting websites. But when we can go into that 3D model, annotate on top of it, give instruction, allow commenting, you know, on that, and then push that back out where we extract a 2D image out of the PD, out of the 3D model, drop that down into a PDF or into just a web link that's going to give them all those annotations, all of the text context, all of the information that they need to be able to make decisions. And it's not what we think is actionable. The customers are defining their inspection type. So it's what are their statuses for things? What are they categorized, you know, thing, you know, information as? What do they consider, you know, urgent or what is flags that they need to have. So it's built on a premise that you can jump into the software within less than an hour. That's one of our mantras, you know, on the dev team is no matter what we do, you've got to be able to implement this and be off to the races in less than an hour. And you get all of that information, whether you want it online with a link, if you want it on your mobile device, if you want a PDF and email it out to somebody. So, so in, in that, uh, uh, it's, I, it's kind of like two pieces I'm hearing. The first is on the Matterport tour is the annotation. So I, I think of Matterport as having the ability to tag. And within those tags, there's opportunities to add comments or photos, videos, documents, pointers, or, or all those kinds of things that, uh, let's say, a safety inspector wants to call attention to issues on a construction site. Uh, and, and those uh, 100 issues need to be uh, worked through and then the person on the field who's uh, actually responsible for the punch list of taking care of those safety issues, does that mean they can filter and say, oh, I, I, I wanna deal with fire extinguishers first. I wanna deal with uh, uh, some lighting issues. I wanna deal with the, the soda cans that are sitting on the edge of the, uh, the two by fours uh, before the drywall goes up and we need to make sure those get removed. Is, is that uh, uh, by the person in the field, can they sort by the kinds of, uh, uh, issues that have been identified? Correct. So it's one of the examples we'll show you later today. You know, we've got a sample construction site that's pretty much wrapped up. It's a house and everything looks great, but there's a couple of problems throughout it. And so things are 
you know, we call them endpoints, which, you know, it's very similar to, you know, a matter tag, but it allows you to put a little bit more information to it. it, allows you to collaborate real time with your team inside of it, allows you to issue whether that endpoint is resolved or if it's still an open pending issue. And just as you said, we can say, show me just everything that deals with paint. Show me everything that just deals with, you know, electrical. Show me just the plumbing. So we can filter this out. And not only can we do that, but if you think of this in a practical application to where we've got a, say we've got a home or even a business or one of our large, you know, hotel partners, we don't need to send someone there to actually scan the facility. They can get the model scanned. We can have someone back at corporate. They can go through and mark everything up. And then we can say, we need to send this to the electrician. Well, the electrician gets a link and this is, it's going to sound very simple, you know, Dan, but it's something that's, you know, it's the simple things that make life easy. I think we've all lived the pain of where we're trying to get, you know, our vendors and people to collaborate inside of software. And we just want simple information. So I talked with a client the other day and did not to go into a long story, but if we'd run that example, say we've got a property or it's a house, I send, I mark up the problems that I've got and I send this to my electrician or I send it to a painter, doesn't matter who it is. And I just send them the link and I say, I need to know what is it going to take in order to get this fixed? Tell me how much money and how much time. Well, when he gets a link and he clicks that while he's sitting at, you know, a, a restaurant or he's sitting there at lunch, he opens it up on his phone and he sees the picture. He sees the urgency. He sees the detail. He sees the narrative that he's been told by, you know, the person that sent it to him. And then he's got a button right there that says, you know, add comments. Well, he clicks, he types his name, he types back, it'll be two weeks, you know, and $200. And then he moves to the next one, you know, three weeks, you know, $500. Meanwhile, we're getting that information, and we're adding that back into the conversation right inside of inspect. So we didn't have to create him an account, we didn't have to name him as a user, we didn't have to buy another license, we didn't have to get him signed in, we didn't have to make sure his browser was taken care of, we didn't have to deal with all of that complexity. And we're able just to get immediately the information. So we all know when you walk around on these sites, you know, with a lot of these guys or when you're working with whether it be construction or brand compliance, people are pointing at things that needs to change. Well, what is it going to take? And you can rattle that information fast. But how do you get that institutional knowledge back into a system where somebody can go, I need to capture that, but I need to do it for something on the other side of the country and I need to do it fast. And that's what we do for you. So I, I could imagine part of what I'm hearing is uh, the, the person that may be identifying the issues, and let's say they come up with a, a 200, 300 issues, can easily be filtered by the trades that needs to work on that particular challenge. So this is the paint person or the drywall person or the finishing person or the floor person. They don't need to see uh, all 300 uh, items that have been tagged. They just need to see the ones that are relevant to them. And I, if I hear you correctly, Matterport plus NSPECT it enables exactly that. Correct. And here's the other thing, you know, and this is, you know, I say this, we love, you know, Matterport, we love our Matterport models, but when you get into some of these really large projects, when you're in 50,000, 75,000 square feet, even 20,000 square feet, you know, you still have to move around the entire place. And so that takes time for someone to find, you know, where are those problems? What do I need to identify? You know, where is the mechanical closet? You know, if it's an electrician, this we've got a breaker that's out. If you've never been into a building, you know, it's, I don't know where that is. You know, I got to go. And so now we're wandering around inside the model looking for, you know, a mechanical room. And then we've got to get into the mechanical room. And then we got to go find where it was. Whereas inspect, you can say, show me all the electrical issues. And when you can click, you know, one button says, go to point. We're going to take you directly to that endpoint, And we're going to show you exactly where it is. And we're not just going to take you as a snap into it, but we're gonna take you into a fly-in just as Matterport does. So you can get some idea like, oh, I'm in the front lobby. Now let me see, oh, I've flown around the back corner. I went down the hall, I went to the right. And now this is where it is. So I've got I've got an idea of where I'm going, you know, there. So I think of that as a deep link. Is that is that what we're talking about within Matterport? A very specific, a specific mm -hmm. place to fly in to the Matterport tour where that problem or challenge or opportunity is. Correct. We use some of the deep link on when you're inside the application and we can deep link, you know, or we deep link also from like the PDF reports and other things there. But at the same time, if you already know what you're looking at, if you've been working on a job site, you may not need the deep link and you just might say, 
just give me the report and let me see that, oh, this is a breaker can. And I can see the breaker in the top right, you know, line 22 is broke, you know, or it's not working. I know exactly where that is. I click my add to comment. I'll have it fixed before the end of the day. And I go out and get to work and I didn't have to start. I didn't have to get into a whole nother application. I didn't have to change every the way I work. We end up getting whether it be the brand or the construction or the management, anybody that, you know, our clients are getting more of their vendors and more of their team members, even their internal team members, where it's like, hey, we're, we inspected this property for brand compliance. You know, we're not talking about construction. And they just send it over to somebody and they mark everything that's wrong. And then somebody can say, well, here's what they need to do, the corrective action. You know, this is what's wrong. Or actually, no, we'll allow that. And so, we got someone else to use the software without having to get them into the software. Yes. Um, uh, Stuart, I see you nodding. Did you have other things to yeah, add with you, branding? You, well, you know, I think it's always, it's not always about what's wrong either too, right? And we've even seen, we we have a hotel client who has talked about, you know, we like the idea of even being able to use these to train people. You know, it's not always about what's wrong, right? So in the brand standard, it's like, you know, they're able to go in and drop notes and comments so that somebody can actually use this as a training tool as well, even from safety standpoint, like this is where you want to be. So you can fly through a location, you can see these things. So we don't always want to think of inspect as being the thing that's pointing out everything that's wrong as much as sometimes it's pointing out what is right. And it's a way that we can also train and we can pass on the knowledge to, you know, to, to others inside of an organization or even vendors who've never been inside of a facility. Like this is what this is what's right. This is how we want it built. This is the way we, we can look at it. And anyway, so we, we, we see also others have, you know, it's always nice when your clients are bringing back to you other ways that they're using it to make it utility. And it's just kind of like, OK, that's great, you know. It's not always about the problem in the field as much as it is sometimes like, what is the brand standard? What 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 do we need to hold ourselves to? Uh, yeah. uh, if I, Brandon, if I could go back to you on facilities uh, management, you mentioned work order management software. Uh, is there any specific ones that you've presently built out to or plan to build out to? We took the kind of, we don't have anything specific that we, you know, build into. We built the endpoints to where people can, you know, grab data. We can push data, you know, to endpoints that are out there. We integrate with a number of third-party tools, but it's, it's, that's the kind of cat and mouse game in the development world, right? If I build out to these, you know, 27 different, you know, work order management systems, everybody's going to need the 28th and 29th that we haven't gotten to yet. So, we felt it was best at this point to build the infrastructure and the endpoints push pull to where clients can grab data that they want themselves or tell us where you want us to push it to or go back old school and we'll give you a CSV file, you know, and let you take it where you want. Okay. Um, is there a challenge with... Um, I'm thinking about that uh, large companies tend to have, there, there's there's an expert in the company somewhere. A company may have hundreds or thousands of employees. And those people, I imagine, get uh, pressed into problem issue solving that may involve getting on a plane to go see the problem in person. Is there an aspect of Matterport Plus NSPEC that enables the experts not to have to travel so that their time is better used? Maybe that's a Stuart question. I, I, I see you nodding there, Stuart. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's been some of the great feedback that we've gotten is that um, there is, uh, there's a lot of institutional knowledge with a lot of the retiring, you know, uh, workforce. And right now we're finding people are leveraging Inspect for exactly that. I mean, you know, they may have a subject matter expert or multiple on their team, but they don't have enough. And and there's and there's more there's more demand there is supply and so yes we're absolutely seeing that right now we have a client who um, you know they kind of have a, a one person that is really really good at this and right now they're leveraging it from a standpoint of like okay how do we how do we get inspect in front of him so that he's not having to jump on planes and fly around. You know, he also likes to wake up his kids sometimes, you know, and drive them to school. And so it's this idea that not only can we also, um, 
um, multiply their own knowledge, their intellectual capital by being able to have those people make a bigger impact without having to jump on planes. And obviously that's, that saves time and it saves money. And it's allowing these organizations to be able to make faster, um, better decisions. But at the same time, think about the training of that too. Now we have ways that the institutional knowledge can be passed on to the next generation. And so we're really excited about that. I mean, that's that's a struggle in a lot of different industries right now, Dan, and I know you dig in on this stuff, so you know that, right? I mean, we know in the utility space, there's a huge uh, gap between the people who know how to do all this stuff and the next generation that a lot of them haven't haven't learned it because they've been relying on technology more than than manual processes and in, in old school SOPs. So, um, so yeah, yeah that's I'd, been an issue. I'd jump in there, you know, Stuart. I won't say names, but, you know, Dan, what we found, you know, and this will go to what Stuart was talking about before, I, you know, I kind of lean on the negative sometimes, always finding problems, right? But on the plus side, you know, we've got uh, we've got a number of clients that have started using, Stuart will probably know who I'm talking about when we get here, but it's, if you think of like a mechanical room, I'll give the example, you've got a mechanical room that's, you know, not just a small, not just like, you know, the elevator and the HVAC, you know, system, but, you know, decent sized facility. And you've got where you've got somebody on staff, right? You got one or two guys that are keeping this place going. Those guys to get that information out, you know, there's nothing necessarily that went wrong. You know, a maintenance item is not a, you know, wrong. We have to do maintenance on facilities. And so it might be, that something went wrong inside during the day. And then there might be just some things that were just regular maintenance and to try to describe, well, I went into the mechanical room and there was a you know piece of pipe, you know, and it was 18 inches to the right of, you know, this gauge. And it was, you know, five feet off the ground. And this is where the 90 degree elbow was that I had to, re you're, you're spending so much time trying to explain that basically all you did was replace a fitting or you had to go into a fuse box and replace this particular fuse and then reset this breaker where because it's such a hindrance to do that much, you know, to pull that information out of those guys that just know how to fix it, where they're able to use, we've got a number of clients now that are having these guys go in at the last hour of their shift, you know, the last 30 minutes and say, go into the model. I want anything that you touched or you did, go point on it, you know, click on it, and then write out and tell us what you did today. We don't need to describe where to find it or how it was. Here's the breaker, you know, this breaker tripped. Well, the breaker tripped. I had to go change this piece. This is what was wrong with it. A lot of them are even dictating and not even necessarily typing the information. And then the clients are pulling that information out, basically, and now we've got a log or a journal for all of the information that's happening in that room. So when the next guy comes in, he's like, I don't know what to do, but he can go through and be like, what happens at this panel? And he can read through, you know, oh, this happened and that happened. And this is, you know, here's a year's worth of information because we knew, you know, Joe was going to be retiring. So we started having Joe spend the last hour of his day doing this each day. So, so uh, I, I want to go back for a moment to the, the experts, wherever they are across the country who have typically been flying in as the SWAT team to come in and solve problems. Does Matterport plus Inspect flip the model so that the expert gets to stay at their own location and, and the space comes to them virtually? And, and uh, help me out. I see some nodding going on. Yeah, that's here's the example I give everyone and it hopefully drives it home. Um, We've all probably had the unfortunate event where we've either ourselves or a family member has had to go into the hospital and get an x-ray. Most of the time that x-ray is being read by somebody on the other side, you know, of the country now. And it could be, you know, a radiologist that's sitting on his couch that gets an alert that rolls over and grabs an iPad and starts to pinch and zoom and look at it and go, yep, we've got a fracture here, writes up his report and pushes it back and the ER does what they need to do or they send you to the referral. We're doing the exact same thing at Inspect. We're taking these guys who have the knowledge, whether it be OSHA, you know, safety specialists that have retired, whether it be, you know, just general people that, you know, know, you know, oil and gas industry. And instead of them being able to do two to three visits, site visits a week, we're moving them to where they're doing two to three visits a day, sitting at home and saving. And now I'll be the first one to say, we're not going to be able to inspect everything 100% of the time, but we can take a good 80% cut and say, 
we're going to knock out these 20 facilities on Monday to Wednesday. And then we're going to go see these two that made some big red flags for us on Thursday and Friday. Better use of the time of a expert. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So let me just stay with this. And I, I want to rattle off what I think I heard is there's a by leveraging the expert where they are, rather than having them come on site, that is enable their productivity, perhaps to shoot through the roof, because they're not spending time traveling. Second is, it, it may even be employee retention, because they, as, as um, Stuart said, they get, get, they get to wake up in the morning, wake up their, their child in person, not by, not by phone. So perhaps employee retention, it's saving time, it's saving money, it's moving the expertise back to the expert rather than the expert constantly having to travel or experts travel the country. Are there other kinds of benefits when you flip the model and have the model yeah. come to the expert? Yeah, I'll so do that to, uh, Stuart. Yeah, take yeah, well, this story because I say it the wrong way. You say it much more eloquently. Well, than I, I mean, I, I just want to use some of my own experience. So I used to own a construction company, Dan, years ago, and, and we had projects all over the U.S. And there were days where I would spend all day trying to troubleshoot, as Brandon said earlier, and kind of in my mind build what was being told to me over the phone. That was not a good use of my time. And I'm not even sure I gave valuable information back because I was I was having to kind of we were doing the police sketch. Right. Like I'm like, OK, is this what we're talking about? And and I'd find myself in those in those days, I could spend four or five problems that day solving things from, you know, Atlanta to Houston. And I didn't really get anything done because I didn't have a way to be able to physically see that. So what's also being involved with that is I'm having to call other people. And now next thing you know, I'm pulling in four or five people to try to solve a problem that I don't, I, no one has real vision on it except for the person in the field who's not describing it well, right? And so I think about when, yes, it's about keeping that subject matter expert at home or, or at home base where they can be effective. But think about how many people are typically brought into a problem when we don't have all the information or we don't have enough information to, to, to make a quick decision. And we just, we, we are just seeing at inspect that this is, these are the things that are being eliminated that a lot of times people aren't even taking into account that that's a cost. That's a real expense to the business and it slows things down. And look, we're moving into, into a, a time and space where like you're slowing down your employees, you're, you're keeping them from executing. You're starting to have cultural issues. You're starting to have people get frustrated with the systems and the processes. And so as Brandon says, I think we are a very simple tool, but I think through the simplicity of it, it has great impact and it keeps less people from having to deal with problems. And it's allowing, it's allowing asynchronous communication to happen where it's delivering those results. So it's not just about saving the subject matter experts time. It's about saving the rest of the team's time. Well, and I'd add to that, Stuart, maybe you can jump in and say this better. I always say it the wrong way. To kind of one of Dan's point, one of the benefits is when you send some of these subject matter experts out on a regular basis, and they go see the same facilities in the same places and they go to the same, you know, they're making the rounds, right? You know, I've got to go see this every quarter. I've got to go do this. Relationships get formed there and friendships, you know, get formed there. And that we want that, you know, right? With people, we want people to get along, but also it questions, you know, what's the steward, what's the term you used the other day? You know, it's the integrity of, you know, that report. It's, or yeah, it's, it's it's the integrity of the report, right? Is it one of those things where I'm like, Dan, we're buddies. Can you just get this fixed so I don't have to mark this thing up, please? Oh yeah, yes. I'll get it taken care of tomorrow, yes, right? Yes, please. I, I don't I don't need that to end up in a report. Is that okay right. with and you? So, and just so go now, fix that in it's... Yeah. So when you take to exactly what you guys are saying, if we take in, you know, with Matterport and the ability, you know, with an iPhone and an access camera, and we can tell that local manager hey, I need you to, you know, once a month, hit these scans. The scans are immediately, you know, going in and they get processed inside of Matterport. They get dropped into Inspect. And now we've got, it's behind a curtain. It's Oz, you know, they're looking out for the company and saying, these are the things that need to be done. You know, here's some great work. You know, as Stuart mentioned, we can, you know, point out, these are really good things. We need to have our other franchisees look at this or, 
you know, this is non-biased. I don't have a relationship. I need to make sure that this is done right. So if I'm hearing you correctly, that by having the inspection done remotely where there perhaps isn't a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship between the inspector and the on-site uh, person, that something that actually needs to get annotated, noted, documented might actually now happen that may not have happened because of personal relationships that have been developed over time. Or, I'm seeing nodding. I'll just accept that. Uh, you know, we've been talking a little bit at, at somewhat of a high level without necessarily getting our hands around, like, tactically, what's the deliverable? Brandon, uh, can you show, tell us, uh, you know, what are the, uh, we, we understand Matterport, um, but now where is the end spec? Exactly what is it that you're doing? Is there a report that you can show us? Or is there a, a back-end demo or front-end demo that you want to show us? Yeah, we can jump in and, you know, kind of I can share a screen right here and kind of give you an idea of what we're, you know, looking at. We'll not, we won't go into the weeds, but we'll jump straight to the the good stuff, right? We've talked about this report. At the end of the day, I'm going to jump in. Let me share a screen. I'll show you real briefly how fast that gets generated and what's done. And then we can, I'll stop sharing. We can talk and then you tell me what you want to see. So Sounds great. If I jump in here, you know, this is, you know, inspect in all of its glory of what we're doing here. So we've got a number of points, you know, that we've placed here, but let's go to the meat of it. So that quick, we generate a report to where we've got, we've extracted this 2D image, you know, out, you know, this was reported by the WGA and network, you know, it was reported today, <laughs> you know, the category, you know, this is a franchisee responsibility. It has not been resolved. The status, you know, it hasn't been approved. It's got a deficiency status. We don't have any additional comments that have been added at this point, but you know we can see that this is no longer a valid offer. You know that this needs to be removed, and so this right here allows us to move through and see. You don't have to walk this entire facility. You're able to go directly to where all the points are. You know who reported it. You know when the problem is, and if you need to basically add a comment and give feedback, you can give it right here. And this is the same thing. If I go take this, if I scroll back up and say. You know, let me generate a link and let's go incognito for a second. And then if you notice, we've got a tokenized link up there. Just as I was talking, you don't have to be logged into the application. You're able to come in with that, you know, secure link. And I can still add comments back and say, you know, my name is Stuart. This promotion, we are still doing this promotion. That's why this is here, you know. And so that's going to get pushed right back to those inspectors. Just as we're sitting here, I can generate and say, let's take this all the way out to a PDF report level. And I go and open the PDF and we're sitting here with a PDF branded with your company information, push down, these reports are customizable. Same thing, all the data that sits here, we've got all the information. I can email this right over to somebody and they can get to work you know, right away on top of this. So I think I'm seeing two things here. One is a PDF where somebody might uh, just have it in the field, be making notes. But the other was the the link to the report is it, when you send the link, that's the one where the communication can be two ways. Correct. So on the link itself in a PDF, you know, we're not actually, you know, we're not interactive, obviously, on a PDF. That's more printed out. It's the clipboard that makes the magic happen, right? You know, nothing gets done on a job site without a clipboard. Print it out, put it on there and go. But then when the guy sits, the newer guy you know, right, the new clipboard is the iPad. So he opens up his iPad and he's scrolling through with this link that might have just been text to him. And then he's able to open up and then be able to say, you know, that this is done. He can give feedback. And then it starts coming back and forth from corporate, for lack of better words. Great. Can you go back to the screen just before the report was generated? Into here, the inspection? Yes. So, uh, if you could just show us a little bit of the annotation at, th at this point of what it is that you can uh, uh, maybe move to a particular location within the Matterport space uh, and then annotate that space. I know we got a lot of technology going on here and it, it can cause a challenge between how we do WGA and TV Live at five and the Matterport tour that you're trying to call up. So there we go. Yeah, it just takes... It's all, you know, that and Zoom, everything slows everything yeah, down. Yeah, that, that has nothing to do with Inspect or Matterport. It's WGAN TV and how we do what we're doing that's causing 
that uh, latency. Uh, otherwise, it'd be uh, uh, snappy. So to jump in, if we look right here, we're at the front of this facility, and this is your typical Matterport model. Everybody's used to this, you know, what yep. you want to do. We're used to that. But if I come down here, this is where I can start looking at it and go, you know, I want to look, you know, at things that are franchisee responsibility, or I just want to look at what's a good idea <laughs> for the franchise. And so I say, okay, well, what is this? You know, you know, love the counter, you know, okay, I've got some information here. If I want, I can come in here and add some comments, you know, on it. I could manage the resolution status, put a link, some more pictures, put anything really we want here. But if I need more content, what is this? Well, I just click go to point and it's going to take me straight, you know, as you mentioned, Dan, kind of like a deep link that we're saying that we actually love the counter, you know, that's sitting right here. This is what we want. So if we said, okay, well, we've, you know, we've reviewed that, you know, let's get in and just look at everything and go, you know, wait a minute, this is not an approved machine. Well, what machine's not approved in this facility? Let's jump over, get right back. And we know this is the machine that needs to be moved. And so that same machine, we've got it there. And this is great where we've got all of this Matterport model, but we also, you know, just to touch it for everybody so that we're there, I can flip over. I've also got annotations that are running. This is just on 2D images. This is just uploading pictures from your iPad or your iPhone that you're able to go in and we do the same annotation here. And then they all get brought into that same report. So, so the Matterport models are amazing. We can do that, but sometimes we just need to get information quick. You know, yeah, so if you could just take it. me back to Matterport for a moment. Yep. And I just, uh, if you could just maybe add one endpoint and go slowly over that addition, I think that would be great. Yeah, let's get us here. So we've got the ability to, if I move my mouse around, which you can't see because you can't see my fingers, if I just stop moving my mouse, we get this red dot, you know, this red pointer that pops up. We're automatically selecting. So we don't have to go and click a whole lot of things to make it happen. I can click. And then now I'm over here doing categories and information there. Okay. So ju just go slowly, if you would, to the top right. So yeah. in the top right where it says endpoint category, and there were there was three, not not in the model, in, in the add endpoint in the top right. Yeah, I'm gonna show you just so I'll say so you're adding your point by stopping your mouse, or you yes. can just go in here and say add a point, and then we can move it directly wherever we want. So we'll put one here. And right. everything and, and, and slowly, yeah. so so the there were three items that came up. But for clarification, this this is set by the company. What endpoint categories matters to them? This is not what gets shipped. Correct. These are what we call, you know, inspection types. And so this right here is a franchise location. A hundred percent. Everything that you see in this right panel, whether it be additional fields or anything, this is defined by the end user. They make as many different inspection types as they want, and they're going to pick. So in this case, there just happened to be three endpoint categories under endpoint status. Mm -hmm. The next item that We've would be one. that would be typical would show up in any companies, or they could add or delete or change their endpoint status items. Correct. So we can say this is you know a franchisee responsibility. It's something new, and we can say there is a crack on the floor. Great. And then, and then I, I, I understand the description. Uh, and then I see some boxes that talk about safety, brand violation, urgent dispute. Once again, those for clarification, those are all set by the client of what matters to them to be annotated, to make life easy for them to simply check boxes to, to create the report. Correct. And so as we make this, we've answered our questions, we filled out our data that we want, and then we just say save. Okay, and just for, for, again, for clarification, is there some point where I'm adding video or audio or photos in this process as well? Yeah, you can go in when you get down, once you start editing your points, and then that's where you can start, you know, coming over here, you know, different, you can upload pictures, browse for files, different information, whatever it is that you'd like to place. Awesome, so at any digital asset, can be added to the annotation. Correct. Great. And at that point, then you're generating a report. Unless you were going to show us something else, I was take it off of screen share. 
Yeah, no, I was just going to, the last thing I was going to show you is we just made this in front of everybody just to see, you know, that's how fast, you know, if we bring all the way this down, we've got it here. It's not a rendering. We don't have to do anything special. We're ready to go and we're ready to start adding comments, you know, real time. So that, that that's awesome. Uh, I, I think we were going to try some role plays. I'm not sure that it's necessary, but let, let's, let's see how that goes. And maybe, uh, um, uh, Stuart, which one do you want to start with? Yeah, we can just talk about like large national hotel restaurant, you know, company. And, um, you know, if you take, for example, let's say you have 100 locations around the country. Um, and so, you know, once a month, once a quarter, you're out uh, capturing 3D images at the and you're creating those spaces, right? And, it, and so you start thinking about, okay, well, you know, how are we using these things, right? Like, that's a lot of data. How are we getting, um, how are we getting our teams, you know, who's, who's using them? How are they leveraging those things? And so I think when we think about that, there's a lot of pain points specifically about, you know, ex inspecting their brand, um, brand management. How do we make sure that we're, that we're living up to those standards? We also see a lot with the PIPs, the, uh, the property improvement plans, right? Like, hey, what are the things that need to be done from a construction or a repair standpoint to make sure that those standards are being kept up there? We also have seen where these hotels are also having new constructions. They're taking over uh, an existing property and so there are constructions, so there's gonna be punch list. There's always compliance. And then, you know, we talked about it earlier, just that whole unbiased in inspection and review of, of the site, you know, mm -hmm. how you know, how do we make sure that we don't have Joe who always works all the properties in Arizona, you know, Joe and all the managers have gotten to be buddies. And now all of a sudden it's like, we're not getting the real reports back because everything's always like, Joe, you know, I'm going to take care of that tomorrow. Right. And so, um, so those are kind of some of the issues that have been presented to us as like pain points yeah. around, around their properties and what that, it is that they can do specifically with Matterport. Okay, that's cool. We, 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 we can skip the role play, but we'll, let's talk about the other categories and what the pain points are. So uh, you had mentioned uh, um, residential real estate agent. How might, uh, what are the pain points for a real estate agent uh, and how does Matterport plus NSPECT help? Sure. Well, you know, and I I want to talk about maybe the whole process there, right? Let's talk about home inspection. Let's talk about the real estate agent. Let's talk about the buyer, right? Because I mean, it takes all of them to create a sale, right? Or or to close on a property, right? And so when you think about it, there's a lot, if someone is relocating from, you know, Phoenix to Atlanta, right? Well, they may fly in to see this property, but what happens when the inspection report comes back and it's all those things need to happen before closing, right? It's very expensive for on a relocation for somebody to, to be able to fly across the country. Now just take someone who's buying the house down the street. People are busy. They don't always have an opportunity to go by the house multiple times, check on inspections, what's been done, what's, what's happening, right? And what we're seeing is with, with leveraging Matterport and, ins, and Inspect and being able to have multiple parties be able to collaborate on that space, we can, we, can, we can see inspections coming through from the inspector as far as what needs to be fixed, what is not, what needs to be repaired. The negotiation could be happening through the document. Hey, we're good with that if you'll fix this, right? And so we start to see that, you know, can these deals happen faster? Can it be less pain? Can it be less travel, less time for, for people to be able to do and um, to be able to negotiate their way through a, a closing opportunity, right? And it, when you think about the real estate market, you know, the same is true for the commercial market, right? And so anytime you're talking about real estate and inspections and closings and things like that that need to happen, we just believe that, or we're seeing that inspect is a perfect tool to sit in between all these different parties who, like Brandon said, not everybody has to be an inspect user. Not everybody has to have Matterport. Yeah, and yeah. I'd add to that, you know, one of the big things I think, you know, in that real estate, commercial, residential, even property management, you know, it's playing the game of telephone. You know, if you're that realtor, you know, you've got somebody on the phone, you know, a buyer who's saying, you know, well, I walked through the house the other day and this is what was wrong. You know, it was the ceiling was cracked over here. And so you get it from one to the realtor, then that realtor conveys it to the other realtor. And then that realtor conveys it over to the, you know, owner. And by that time, you know, we went from a crack in the ceiling to the skylight is, you know, falling into the living room. 
it's a whole lot easier. And as Stuart mentioned, the speed, if if I'm that agent and this is you know the property that I've got, and let's face it, I'm probably have, and if I haven't, a shame on me, I already have a Matterport model of this property that I'm selling. There's nothing different that has to be done with it to ingest it inside of Inspect. It's just give us the link and we'll bring it in. But then that realtor sends it to their client and the client works on it at night. And then the comments are already there. And then the realtor just sends the report over to the other agent. It's done. There's no more interpolating. There's no more assuming. It's like, here's the problems that my client has with the property. Go for it. Fix it. Take this all the way down to the final inspection of we're about to close. I need to deliver. You know, here's I want to make sure that these things were done. Cool. I, I, I totally get it. Um, and I, I, as you're talking, I'm visualizing when we purchased the, the house uh, that my wife were living in is all the issues that were in that multi-page report. And well, you know, where was that issue? And 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 there were a lot of people that it had to be communicated to. So I, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Facilities managers, uh, uh, take us through the pain points for related to facilities management. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think one of the biggest issues is preventative maintenance, right? And and being able to identify what are the things that need to happen um, proactively um, that that obviously are um, going to be less expensive and less time or or even impact than that's being done in a reactionary standpoint. Also, safety. Um, you know, I've lived in that world for a long time, and I can tell you, there's a lot of things that that are safe, and they're not. It's not that they're, they seem super intentional as much as it's just somewhat out of compliance type deals that create a big issue, right? And so being able to have people in real time just check on the safety of of a facility. Obviously, we talked about this before, the travel cost and time. Um, Typically, the people inside of a facility management is, um, you know, you're not, you're not going to have um, you're not going to have a ton of resources who are probably your subject matter experts. You're going to probably have a lot of people who are out in the field that are kind of more of the repair do versus the, you know, identify what it, what needs to be done. And so, again, we still see that or we've experienced that in that industry is one of these limited um, resources with the skill and knowledge and experience to be able to uh, give better direction. And so, we're seeing that in the facility management side. Um, we think there's, you know, obviously a lot of opportunities there, um, just in, in in those kind of pain points that we're that we're identifying. So, is, there, is, there, is there anything more on on safety safety inspections, uh, maybe in terms of regulatory compliance? Yeah, Brian, mm-hmm. I'll let you jump in that since you've got way more experience in the safety. <laughs> Uh, regular. Yeah, you could. We could do a whole other show just on the safety side of this. We found that if um, if you're not in, if you're in safety and you hadn't found inspect yet, um, you're probably a day away from finding it because it's just going rapid through the industry. It's way. If, you could be on the small side of things, but if you're big and you've got OSHA knocking on your door or you've got you know different things like you need to know. And one of the most important things, you know, other than keeping people safe, is document and compliance. And so there's you know regulatory to where you know yes you've got to do these things and everybody makes mistakes. But if you can show that you know hey our fire extinguishers we check them every single month. And you just happened to show up the day after, you know, my tag expired. I would have caught that, you know, next week. And they go, well, you do it every month and go, yes, let me show you. Here's last month's report. Here's this month's report. Here's this month's, you know, or, you know, January, February, March. It makes a world of a difference, not to mention gives these safety inspecting, you know, this is a small community, you know, that works really hard, but allows them to communicate with each other, allows them to learn, you know, when there is unfortunately an incident, you know, they can go back and they can look and capture that space and say, you know, what could we have done better? But really where we find, you know, safety gets involved is I'm a medium sized company. I don't have a full HS and E guy on staff. I need, I work with a consultant. My consultant can only get to my, you know, facility once every 90 days or once every six months, or that's all I can afford to fly him out and to go through it. Grab your iPhone, get an access camera, scan the facility, send him over a link, you know, the inspect project and say, you know, Bill, what am I missing? You know, what have we done wrong? Do you see anything out of line? Yes, you can't leave that ladder leaning leaning there. You're missing, you know, the unistrut bracket, you know, over here. You don't have tie-offs over here. You know, those are things that can be done while Bill's 
dropped his kid off at school, as Stuart said, and came back home and sit at the kitchen table or on the couch and is able to mark those things up. And we didn't have to wait for him to get on an airplane. We didn't pay for hotels. And we got immediate information that we don't have any data, but maybe we're saving lives along the way. So, I, I'm, I'm hearing saving lives, saving lives, saving lives, reducing accidents, all the things that are related to, 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 to safety that, that we obviously want to hear that of uh, reducing, saving lives, reducing accidents. Talk a little bit more, though, about regulatory compliance documentation. Uh, I, I, you gave an example on the fire extinguisher that was ex going, that was expired the next day, and there was being able to show the history of that the fire extinguishers are inspected every month, and it here and here's the documentation for it. How how important it is it to be able to have a uh, a documentation within a three dimensional model where there is this uh, annotated history. So first and foremost, I'm not with OSHA. I don't ever want to be and don't pretend to be. <laughs> and I did not stay at a Holiday Inn last night. So, but with that said, I think what's important with anything, you know, is if I go scan a facility, if I'm using just a Matterport model and I scan, you know, the facility, if I don't have the documentation to prove that I either knew that I did it correctly or noticed that there was a problem, just having a simple digital twin of a facility that's got, you know, safety violations or has met everything, there's something to be said for, here's my report from January, February, March, and I can show you every infraction that I found, and it was fixed the following month. Here's everything that we did correctly, and I verified that we did it correctly, and I've got it documented, versus just saying, well, we scanned our building once a month, and we all looked at it. Well, you looked at it, and that's where... That's where the birth of Inspect really came. When you sat in a boardroom and you had that conference, as Stuart alluded to earlier, and said, you know, this is great, but I can't take a Matterport model and put it in my pocket, or I can't go put it in a file cabinet. And if OSHA knocks on the door one day or another, you know, regulatory body and says, show me that you knew that you were taking the right steps. I can say, look, there's a non-slip surface, you know, Matt, right here. And I pointed it out. You don't point out everything that's wrong. Point out what you did that was right. You know, point out what you're doing across the board, show the good things and show the bad things and then show the bad things corrective. That's what you need to be able to do. It's about documentation. And, yeah. uh, and what about reports and analytics? Well, that's uh, that's I'm referring to the report. You know, you would print. Uh, out. Let, let me ask the question a little bit differently. Yeah. So uh, uh, I have. Um, a company with uh, 147 locations in 36 states. And one of the things that we uh, are using Matterport plus Inspect for is related to fire extinguishers. Now that said, fire extinguishers are only one line item of things that are regularly inspected. Can you generate a report? Can, can you use Inspect to generate a report to say, all my locations all fire extinguishers, uh, and I want to know the, the, the status of any, they're, they're all marked safe or inspected. Yeah, you can go in and filter by fire extinguisher. You can pull the data. You know, we've got, you know, open access. You do that data where we dump it, you know, either to your system or if you want to pull it from us. But you're able to go in and show, here's when I scanned it. You know, here's when I actually checked it. Here's when I marked the, you know, here's... There's a difference between a scan date and a report date, right? You might have yeah. scanned last week versus reported this week. So we're going to know that, and we're going to be able to show that we're consistent. And that's one of the things, and I didn't know I was about to bring this up, but I thought you might have been going there. But if I've got 147 locations and we're checking fire extinguishers, well, guess what? I can have the same two guys that know to the letter of how we want our compliance and consistency. I don't have, well, this guy kind of checks here. This kind of guy runs there. We do it. It's done by the same people, the same two guys. They print the same report out. They put it in the same folder. You know, it's in the three ring binder. It's, it, we're consistent on it. And that's what, you know, these safety guys want. That's what they want to know that we're not got 147 and we just didn't have time to get to that last one. And so we kind of just stamped it and moved on. I, 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 Dan, can I add one point? To yes, that? please. I think the other thing that's really important about this, and, I, and we may have skipped right over this, 
But imagine those 147 locations around fire extinguishers and one of the guys in Seattle and the other guys in Chicago who are responsible. They can collaborate inside of Inspect in real time, just like they're in the office together, right? And so it's it's not only about being able to, to, to push it out to other, you know, third-party vendors and contractors and clients and, you know, whoever else, but it's also the ability that they can work inside the same file and the same system um, across offices and be able to, in real time, have that asynchronous communication with it. So just want to make sure we kind of brought that up too. Awesome. Here's the last point I'll make with that. And this is, you know, not to be a jab, you know, but for the guys who are really worried in those, you know, executive teams, when you've got your hs &E guys, how do you check your hs &E guy? You know, you can take this and send it to someone else and say, you know, here's our report. Here's everything that we found that we're doing good. Here's everything that's bad. Here's the things that we need to work on. Do you see anything that we missed? And we don't have to fly those guys in. They can review the whole report. They can mark up their own reported items and say, we need to do a little bit of training on your guy. He needs to know a little bit more about fall protection because he's missed a couple of things. Okay. That's uh a big thing. Before we wrap it up, I just have a couple of uh, last items. First, just to comment on the safety. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I don't give legal advice, but I suspect if you had Matterport plus Inspect and you had the history uh, documented, you, you might stay out of uh, getting fined for uh, something where you have demonstrated that you are actually taking action on a consistent basis and uh, uh, annotating it and and being able to provide re reports on it so that the the intent is shown even if something got missed somehow some way uh it just seems like it it might save companies from getting a very large fine uh, because of the documentation i, I want to move on to just uh, uh two more topics that uh uh, and I'd like to be brief on them. The first is I could imagine that there's either some, some states or some countries that are starting to say, oh, we actually need to have some type of, uh, of uh, documentation regarding the safety of buildings. Is that something you want to speak to, Brandon? Yeah, there's some new things that we're seeing, you know, that are happening across the pond in the UK, you know, that's, you know, there's obligations, you know, under, you know, there's the Building Safety Act that just went into play that is, you know, without getting into the details for anybody that doesn't know. And I think what we see across the, you know, somebody dominoes first, right? Some country says we're going to do this and then everybody else is going, well, wait, if they're going this hard on safety, why aren't we? But they're now, you know, in the UK, the Safety Act is requiring building owners of certain sizes and, you know, number of capacity of people to, they have to document this. It's not okay. going to be enough to not have a, you know, a digital twin. It's not going to be, you're, you're going to have to have a digital twin. You're going to have to document it out, which it's kind of, as I said in the beginning, that's kind of, we fell by accident into being the reporting engine for Matterport. So, so, yeah. so uh, given what's going on in the UK, where does Matterport plus Inspect fit in as a solution? Is, is this a, is well, this a bullseye? Is this spot it, on? It's, I wish I could have said I could have predicted it, but to put it this way, you've got the, you know, make your digital twin. We both need it. And you can spend hours with screenshots and annotation tools and, you know, getting inside of, you know, Google Docs or Word Docs or PowerPoints, or you can grab a seat and inspect and be done, you know, very quickly because you can just point the problems out, print your reports, put them in the file and you're done. I want to go back to something that, that Stuart said at the very beginning of the show is you you you're, you started out doing using Matterport as a solution for a specific problem, but it turned out that really Matterport was a tool. It wasn't the solution. I suspect that some of our viewers have looked at Matterport and have moved forward with creating hundreds, if not thousands of models across the United States or around the globe, uh, and have just come to the same conclusion uh, that, that you all came to and started NSPECT. So uh, if, if I am a big time Matterport, I, I'm, I'm creating hundreds, perhaps thousands of Matterports, and I am trying to 
manually do all the things you talked about, Stuart, at the top of the show, what's my next step? How do I, how do I, uh, what, what should I do? Well, um, yeah, you can go to our website, inspect.net, and you can book a demo. Um, and we'd be more than happy to, um, you know, walk you through a quick little demo like we saw. But, but more importantly, we want to learn more about you and your business. You know, how are you leveraging 3D Matterport models, right? Like, how are you using to, to deliver business results? And if you were maybe sitting in the boardroom where we were when we started Inspect, you're probably realizing it's a really great tool and it's great information. But if you're not taking that one or two steps further, you might be missing an opportunity to really deliver some good business results and save yourself time, uh, team and money on, on all these things. And so, you know, that's what we would say. Go book a demo. Come check it out. Um, we'd love to see everybody, uh, you know, try to find how can 3D Digital Twins uh, help you run your business better. Awesome. Uh, Brandon, would you like the final word before we say bye? Yeah, I'm usually the guy talking a lot. So um, appreciate Stuart carry me a little bit here. I think at the end of the day, you know, we've got the ability for people to go, you know, get the product, play with it, you know, get a demo, see how it works in their world. And, you know, Dan, when we started this, you know, safety was a really big focus for us, you know, safety. But we've had people call us, you know, on a weekly basis that are scheduling demos that are doing things with Inspect that we had no idea. You know, we talked to somebody the other day and they were doing, you know, legacy fulfillment, you know, and but it was just because they needed to get information from their customer. It was never even going to be facing. It was just a way for the for they to take a Matterport model and get people to explain things and point out where things were kind of like we talked about in that real estate world. We didn't know. You know, we've had insurance companies wanting, you know, to basically, you know, point out all the expensive, you know, inf- you know, items in the home. And we want to know exactly what that is and put the serial number on it, take the pictures and, you know, run the report and give it back to us. Every day we find another use case and, you know, Stuart and I and our team will get into, you know, daily huddles. And it's kind of one of those, hey, who's got the most unique use case this week? So, okay. So, let, so let me take it from there and suggest that if you are watching today's show and you are creating dozens, hundreds, or thousands thousands of Matterport spaces, and you're scratching your head about what else you can do with Matterport regarding recording inspections, communicating actions, or documenting compliance, go to inspect.net, check out the website, You can book an appointment and have a consultation to say, this is how we're using Matterport. Here are our problems, our challenges, our hopes, wishes, and desires. Inspect, how can you help us? Uh, Brandon Stewart, thanks for being on the show today. Yes, thank you, Dan. And Dan, thank you for what you're doing. Um, I know this is, uh, you're you're bringing a lot of information around this new technology to to people, and so we, we're big fans of the show and watching you and seeing everything you're doing. So thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Stuart. We've been visiting with uh, Stuart Gilly, Vice President of Marketing of Inspect, and Inspect founder Brandon Foreman, uh, uh, Inspect uh, Matterport partner located in Baton Rouge. Uh, Louisiana uh, for Brandon and Stewart. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV 93.1.